All right, guys, so Amazon have finally confirmed Prime Day, or should I say Prime Days for 2019. It is going to be the 15th and 16th of July. So this is gonna be my first Prime Days, um, as I only started selling in September last year. So I just wanted to kind of go through my thought process with Prime Day, any preparations I've made, um, and kind of what I plan to do on the day. So let's kick things off by showing you what I'm not gonna be doing. And what I'm not gonna be doing is lightning deals. Now let's, uh, if you've been selling on Amazon this year, you would have received a email or multiple emails, they kind of spam your inbox a bit, um, around April, May time, telling you that Prime Day is coming. They don't give you an exact date, they just tell you it's gonna be in July roughly. Um, and they just, they just want you to then submit your Prime deals, or, or sorry, your lightning deals, and then that gives you a chance to order any inventory and, and bring in the appropriate stock levels. Now, I am not a big fan of lightning deals. There's a number of reasons, but let's just go through Amazon's email um, to explain why I won't be doing any lightning deals, because I think their email alone is enough to put most people off. So let's, let's just read through this. Um, firstly, that the submission window closed at the end of May, that's fine. Um, we are gonna be celebrating Prime Day in July. But it would have been nice to have told us the actual dates. Um, it must be obviously a commercial reason why Amazon doesn't confirm the dates until closer to the time but it would be nice if it was kind of if they told you it was early July, late July, because sometimes that can make a difference to your inventory management. So what you have to do, you have firstly you have to be invited to submit a lightning deal. Um, at Christmas, I never received an invite because I hadn't been, I presume because my product hadn't been live long enough, but I actually got invited to submit some lightning deals this time. Um, but I didn't, and the reason being, this is the criteria they want. They want 20% off the lowest price in the last 30 days. Now, typically my products run about 30% profit margin. So if I take 20% off, that's a, most of my profit is gone. Um, the next thing, they want it to be the lowest selling price since the beginning of the year. Um, the products have to have a free style or a higher rating, that's fine, and images which match the style guideline, which might have borderline. Um, but yeah, the first one for me, 20% off your lowest price. Now, most of you FBA guys are probably around that 30% profit margin. Some guys might be higher, you know, some guys might be lower, but generally 30% is the figure that I tend to work with. So I'm not just gonna give up 20% of my profit in order to try and spike my sales a little bit. You know, if I give 20% off, so let's just say for, for example, if I had a 40% profit margin, and all of a sudden I give 20% off, that means I have to sell double the numbers that day to make the same amount of money. So that's why I'm not gonna be doing that. The other issue, and I've seen this with some of the big uh, FBA channels that I follow, um, there's one guy that he brought in a huge amount of stock for um, some lightning deals at Christmas, and then Amazon decided not to run them in the end. And they say here, um, if we scroll down, and I've highlighted it in red, submitting a lightning deal for this week does not guarantee that your deal will run on Prime Day week or will be approved at all. So you're gonna submit a deal, order a load of stock, on the hope that Amazon approve it, and then on the hope they actually do run it. Um, please note that we retain the right to spend, terminate, or modify the date of a deal. So that is why I won't be doing a lightning deal. It's a high risk strategy for boosting sales and reducing profits. So lightning deals are a no for me. I understand that some people might find them uh, you know, useful. They could certainly be useful for spiking sales if you're trying to get ranks and stuff like that. I think as a profit driving mechanism, they uh, are not for your typical FBA seller, I would say. So what am I gonna do? Well, honestly, I'm probably not gonna do much at all. You know, I might just see how my sales go. Going by what happened on Black Friday, I might not do anything and just enjoy the spike of sales um, because the additional volume of traffic on the site alone is gonna spike sales a little bit. So I might just do that um, and enjoy the additional profits. However, the one thing I will probably consider and may very well do, and that's using Amazon's voucher system. Now, if you're not familiar with vouchers, I'll show you how it works. So we'll go back to the uh, classic coat hanger example. Now, before I show you the voucher, you have to think about a customer's mindset on Prime Day. They are coming to Amazon because they believe they're gonna get a better price than they usually do, or what they usually will throughout the year. So Prime Day, you have to match their mindset, and the way you need to do that is to show that your, pro your product is on some kind of offer. So if you scroll through these, and imagine this was Prime Day at the moment, you'd be like, okay, all these guys are selling at a standard price. Yes, you get some people who do this, and again, this is Amazon's whim as to whether they actually show this cross through, because a lot of products don't actually show this cross through now. So this is like a fake discount where you say you've got a higher list price versus the actual selling price. So don't rely on that because the chances are Amazon won't show that even if you do that with your product. But what you'll see as we scroll down, there we go. This is an example of someone who's using a voucher. So if you're in that Prime Day mentality of wanting to get something cheaper than you usually would, 
you're looking for a discount, you get the additional green box on your product listing saying that your product is on promotion. Now I imagine on Prime Day there's gonna be a lot of listings like this, so I think it's essential to have something like this to at least match the competition. So there's one there where you can get three pound off or further down um, offering percent discounts. So I'll show you how this works. So how it works is a you have to still redeem them. Um, and this is quite clever in a way because from a seller's perspective, not everyone that clicks on this product will get this discount. And I'll show you an example in a minute from when I run this uh, for my product on uh, on Black Friday last year. So if this says you can get three pound discount on this product, let's click on this product. So to get this three pound discount, you have to tick the box and you'll be amazed how many people do not tick that box. And to show you, show you what I mean, let's go to, uh, this is, the one that I run last year. As you can see there, there are 45 collections of that voucher. I think that's pretty much how many units I sold over that time. Um, but only 16 people redeemed the voucher itself. So you can potentially offer a slightly bigger discount than you might want to, knowing that not everyone is gonna redeem the discount because they forget to tick the tick box here. And if they don't tick it, Amazon won't give them the discount. So the downside to vouchers is they cost, not just the discount itself. Um, if we go to the voucher creation page, you can see here we've, where you, whether you're choosing a money off or percentage off, you actually have to pay 45p plus VAT, so it's 9p, so 54p you're paying per voucher that is redeemed. So keep that in mind when you're setting up. I think the vouchers, unless you are a huge FBA seller who's happy to invest, in fact, you know, you've got a lot of money to invest in, huge amount of inventory, it doesn't really matter if it sells or not on Prime Day, and you've got a huge amount of cash flow, um, I would stay away from lightning deals. I would look at this mechanism of using vouchers so it allows you to stand out. You get the you get the green box on the listing. It's obvious that your product is on promotion on Prime Day and hopefully that will help you boost your sales without hitting your profit margin too much. I would also consider whether to offer a percentage discount or a value discount based on the price of your product. So offering 20% off 26 pound, that's quite a big discount. You know, that's like, was that five pound 20? Uh, so you're offering a five pound 20 discount. Whereas they come on and said we're offering a four pound discount. Some people, if you're not quick at maths, might go, well, four pound, that's all right, we'll get four pound off this product. So consider when you're working out whether to go for a percentage discount or a pound discount, which one might be more appealing to your customers, depending on your price point. So other than that, my plans for Prime Day are just to see how it goes, enjoy the experience, um, what I'm, it might be the case that by the time I get to Prime Day um, that I decide I don't want to run a promotion because my inventory levels at the moment, I think I've got about 600 of two of my products and about 900 of my third product. Um, and my first two products got 600 each. They, I'm just about to get another batch on a boat, so they won't be here till kind of early August. Um, so there's no point me selling them for the sake of selling them I know they're gonna sell through before the next batch arrives, so it might, just, it might just be the case that, okay, I'm just gonna sell as normal on Prime Day because I know if I run a promotion and sell additional ones, I'm gonna go out of stock, so I'm just gonna lose money on those Prime Day sales when I would have got that money back in the end before the next batch arrives early August. So also think about your stock control. Now obviously, as your business grows um, and you've got you know lots of products and huge cash flow, next year, you can plan things better. You can have you can afford to carry surplus stock because you can afford the fees, um, and you, you haven't got to worry about having your cash flow tied up. But for me, at the moment, um, I don't like to carry too much excess stock if I can avoid it. So I bring ten to bring seven hundred and fifty in at a time, and then sell those through literally as the next batch arrives. Whereas for the product that's got nine hundred in stock, that's my third product, which is kind of slowed down a bit at the moment. So I'm just selling that through at break even to clear that out, um, and then I'll launch another product instead. So that's my plans for Prime Day. Uh, any of you guys got any plans, let me know in the comments below. Um, with it being my first Prime Day, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how the sales perform. With the, only, you know, the only reference point I've got is to compare it to Black Friday and the Christmas period last year. Um, but I think, to be honest, I'm probably looking more forward to Prime Day from a customer's perspective rather than a seller perspective, as it generally can be a very good time uh, to get some good deals on Amazon. Um, I'm not gonna be doing a video next week as I'm not gonna be about, I've got plenty of uh, other bits going on next week. Um, so I'll see you guys early July.